Hello everyone, I'm Vyomay Singh from Geek for Geeks. I'm your mentor for operating system. And in this video, we are going to discuss CPU burst and IO burst. Sometimes it is also called CPU cycle or IO cycle, sometimes CPU burst cycle and IO burst cycle. So guys, we have studied what is CPU scheduling in previous video. But to understand CPU scheduling fully, I would suggest watch at least four video continuously which is what cpu scheduling introduction cpu burst io burst primitive and non-primitive scheduling and then performance criteria for cpu scheduling algorithm after that cpu scheduling algorithm will be a start that means actual problems will come fine i uh, from my side according to my opinion you should complete cpu scheduling algorithm in one go but if it's not possible at least watch starting four videos together it will hardly take one hour or 60 70 minutes fine so let's see what is cpu burst and what is io burst so let's start guys first of all a process execution consists of cycle of CPU execution as well as IO weight. IO weight that means we have seen process states. Fine. Either pro process is running state or in blocked state. If process is in running state, that means it is completing its task on CPU. That is CPU burst. And if a process is waiting for some event to occur or for some event uh, or for some input output or we can say some files in that case it is completing its io burst in waiting or blocked state also it is completing some task which is known as the io burst fine now a process alternate between these two states that means cpu burst and io burst process execution begins with the cpu burst so first of all if there is a process process will start with cpu burst only not from io burst a process always start from cpu burst and that cpu burst will be followed by io burst then after completion of event it will start its another cpu burst then io burst and so on but again last large cycle will be cpu only after cpu burst there can be exit we cannot say after io burst there will be a exit and uh, we can understand it with a simple example suppose you want to uh, run a program just of simple addition fine and you are taking input output from user fine so as soon as you start running the program that means it is cpu burst fine now you are waiting for input from the user that means it is io burst fine after io burst it is what it's doing it is doing some calculation that means again it is a cpu burst fine and after cpu burst it is going to write the answer on some file so that is again io burst fine and after io burst there is something pending you want to print something on the monitor that me or you want to do some calculation fine if you want to do some calculation again then it will be a cpu burst or you just want to return integer 0 1 whatever that means you are just completing the process then again it is the cpu burst fine now last point is eventually the final cpu burst ends with a system request to terminate the execution fine so that is our that is the end of a process so a process alternate between cpu burst and io burst but it always initialize with the cpu burst and it always complete a task with the cpu burst now there are mainly two kind of pro process or two kind of program one is known as the io bound program 
that has very short CPU burst and long IO burst. That means process need very less CPU time, but it requires very high IO time. That means process will spend most of its time in blocked state rather than running state on CPU. And what is CPU bound program? Where process spends where process spends majority of its time using CPU. That means it is very high intensive program where so many calculations need to be done. Suppose let me give you one example. Suppose there are two process there is are two process and both require 40 unit of time. Fine. In IO bound program there is 30 unit of time it requires for IO related task plus 10 unit of time require for CPU related task. So that is IO bound program. If a pro program, another program which required 40 unit of time and it is known as the CPU bound, in that case, a process is spending its majority of the time in the running state or in the CPU. Fine. So in that case, I am assuming 30 unit of time it will spend on the CPU and rest 10 unit of time it is waiting in waiting state of blocked state or we can say IO burst. I hope you understood my point. It was pretty simple point. So I hope you understood what is CPU burst in IO and IO burst. If we talk about the CPU scheduling algorithm, we always assume that we are only considering CPU burst. We are not considering an IO burst in any gate exam unless until it is explicitly mentioned. Point to be noted, it is explicitly mentioned. Uh, right now, in last 20 years, there are only four questions or five questions where they explicitly mention to consider IO burst. Otherwise, all the questions they always ask you to consider only and only CPU burst. Fine. Here in this diagram, you can understand a, a CPU bound program spend most of its time in the running state. That means it is utilizing the CPU most of its time. In IO bound program, a process spend most of its time in the waiting state or blocked state. Fine. CPU bound program also has some IO burst and IO bound program has also some CPU burst because process alternates between CPU bound, IO bound, CPU burst, IO burst, CPU burst and IO burst. Fine. So this is what we say CPU burst and IO burst. In CPU burst, a process is in running state. That means it is utilizing the CPU. What is IO burst? When a process is waiting for some event to occur or it is waiting for some event or some input output files or some resources. Fine. That means a process is inside the blocked state. Fine. I hope you understood this point. It was pretty simple. In next video, we are going to discuss primitive and non-primitive scheduling. You already have little bit idea in our previous video. And in next video, we will study the primitive and non-primitive CPU scheduling with the help of process transition diagram. So it will be very clear to you. So thank you guys. I hope you understood all the concepts. If not, you can watch the video again. Fine. Or uh, again, if you are facing any problem, then what you can do, you can write a feedback or any directly email or even you can message me on LinkedIn. Fine. I will surely reply to you. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.